I would like to begin by thanking you all for the messages and good wishes you sent my way to mark the 10th anniversary of my priestly ordination. Thank you for the very significant roles you have played in the past 10 years. The apostles in today's gospel passage came to Jesus to report all they had done and taught. And Jesus invited them to a deserted place to rest a while. After ten years in the Lord's vineyard, I see this moment as a moment to reflect on what the journey has been so far. To report to Jesus all that I have done and taught. I see it as ten years of amazing grace. I thank God for choosing me in spite of me. I ask God to bless all those who assisted me on my journey to the altar of God and those who keep sustaining me in his sanctuary. For the dead, may God grant them eternal rest. Amen. As a seminarian, one of our professors would always tell us, My dear seminarians, now that you are in the seminary, you are afraid of God. But after your priestly ordination, it will become the turn of God to be afraid of you. It made no sense to me at first until he began to explain. The priest has powers that are not available even to the angels, which can be used or abused. At any time of the day and anywhere, the priest can call on Jesus to come fully into a piece of bread and a cup of wine. At the wedding feast at Cana, Jesus turned water to wine. He has now empowered priests to turn wine to his blood. Though a sinner himself, by raising his hand over the penitent and saying the words of absolution, the penitent is forgiven his sins or her sins. Young as he may be, the priest is a father to all, including his own parents. It felt so nice right after my ordination when I went to my home parish for special thanksgiving. After the Mass, I saw both young and old coming to greet, Good morning, Father, or Congratulations, Father. It was nice to see some of my former teachers addressing me, Father. It became even more interesting when I saw my mom coming out of the church and I wanted to see if she would address me as son or father. Lo and behold, she came up to me and greeted, Good morning, father. I then responded, Oh, good morning, my daughter. How are you doing? A nun who was standing next to me gave me a slap on my back and said, What's wrong with you? Is she not your mom? I turned to her and said, What's wrong with you? Did you not hear her call me father? If I am her father, then she's my daughter. My dearly beloved in Christ, I must tell you that the Catholic priesthood is so sweet. I cannot imagine any greater office that can be occupied by a human being. While I was reflecting on the glories of the priesthood, my mind went back to what another professor told us in the seminary. He said, My dear seminarians, in case you are eventually chosen by God to be ordained, do not take it for a compliment. He paused for a while and added, Because God always chooses the weak and the foolish. And if you doubt me, read, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. 
So the glories of the priesthood is not about me. It is about the grace of God working in me. I was still reflecting on the glories of the priesthood when I picked up the Sunday Missa to begin my preparations for this Mass, and I read the opening words of the first reading. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture. The reading continued. I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them. At this point, I said to myself, What a risk to answer the call to the priesthood. See how much God cares for his sheep. In spite of the powers he has given to me as a priest, I cannot treat the sheep according to my whims and caprices but according to the will of the Good Shepherd. I know how much you trust me because I am a priest. Most of you here are older than I am. A good number of you are more educated than I am, more proficient in English language. Some of you have read the Bible more than I have. I am a bigger sinner than many of you. Yet, when I come to the pulpit to preach, you sit down and you listen to me. It scares me that without relying on the Holy Spirit, I can easily say things that can mislead you. I know how many of you Catholics who are ready to lay down your lives for your priests. But this is also a temptation for us, as we can easily take advantage of that to mislead you or scatter you. My 10th anniversary gives me the opportunity to remind myself that God does not take his sheep for granted. But this is not just about me, and not just about priests. Everyone here is a shepherd. The husband is a shepherd to his wife, and so is the wife to her husband. Parents are shepherds to their children, older siblings to younger siblings. We are shepherds to our friends. Those in civic authority are shepherds to their constituents. Never think you can do and undo in whatever position of authority you are placed. For the Lord in his way can make you to step aside and get another shepherd for his flock. For this reason, in whatever position of authority we find ourselves, we must always consult the Master to be sure we are still working based on our job descriptions. The Apostle, after working for a while, came back to Jesus to report to him what they had done and taught, and to listen to the next command. In whatever leadership position we find ourselves, we must pray about it constantly. Unfortunately, as leaders, even in the house of God, we can become so much engrossed in the work of God that we forget the God of the work. Every one of us here is also a sheep in one capacity or the other. In case you are under any form of oppressive government or leadership, in case you have a leader or a shepherd who is making life unbearable for you, Today's readings are meant to comfort you. Do no harm to yourself, for God is always on the side of his sheep. His intervention is close at hand. In the Gospel passage, Jesus was ready to forgo his rest when he saw the sheep that were like sheep without a shepherd. Cry to him when you are oppressed, and he will respond at the appropriate time. For prayer is your best weapon. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. 
All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer.